Hopefully it worked that time. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't the first time, but I don't know. It's worth a shot to try to get it in place, so. Land back. Okay, so. Didn't find it under science. Yeah, I'll have to double check. Make sure that always happens. Okay, well, let's see what else I got here. Oh. Okay, what am I doing? okay, so let's see. What I want to do is I want to take the cursor, I want to make it the pointer, and see if that picks it up. Because um, if there is pickable, I should be able to change the, uh, the cursor to pointer while it's over them. Let me find out if that helped anything. It's not doing it over the sky and ground, which is a good thing. Uh, is it going to do it over these guys? Come on, load. Hmm. It is not. It's like catching little spots of them, but it's not catching them. It's really weird. Is there anything interfering with touching them? Okay, here's... Well, the other possibility of this thing is when I pick mouse over mold, um, I may be getting the... Um, I'm not getting the array, and so it may be picking the very foremost thing, which might not be what we think it is. Let's find that out. If it's not null... Um, yeah, let me have it say what it is. Let's see what it's finding here. Uh, oh. Good way to double check. Let's see what that happens here. Actually, it should be current ID. It's the same thing at this point, so that doesn't matter. Refresh that and see if we get something in the console log. Be nice to know if it's mousing over. See, ID is blank. That's all fine. It's not finding anything yet. Let's see if we can move this guy. set. Since each one of the meshes, uh, they get an ID right here. But it is visible as false until they actually come in. That's fine. When you see them, then it should already be there. Uh, just checking. I'm not sure why it's not finding these meshes as a whole. Because see, what I'm getting is like, I do have in each one of them, there's a space. Why is that the only thing that has something? This right here catches something, but I don't know what it is. But yet, if I go to here, go to my admin, yeah, just doing a little troubleshooting. Trying to figure out why that's happen, happening in that area. If I put something else in the scene, it finds it right away when I mouse over. So I'm just trying to figure out why when this gets created, I'm going through each one here for each mesh that's underneath 
the objects. So that's all loaded. That's all there. Um, I'm not using that anymore, am I? I marked out that section. I don't want that to be in place. Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, so just to do it. This will be a lot of items, but I want to see the names get set. I'll just tell it to do the ID. As that should tell us that it's pickable and that it's uh, available. And let's see, here they come. All the beta joints of the outside guys. And then something for each one of the avatars, which is what I expected. Hair, tops, bottoms, shoes. Yep. So it is it is creating the name on each one of those parts. Then why when I set this Function is doing just the canvas focus. Wait a minute. That isn't everything. Just tracking something down here. Um, I want to find out why it's not highlighting each mouse or each uh, avatar as you move the mouse over them because it's becoming where you got to click them numerous times before it actually selects them. And I think it has to do with uh, I don't know. There's something interfering with clicking on them. Something in the scene maybe, or the fact that the mouse over isn't happening that it's causing it not to select it or know it's there. But it could be that it's seeing something else that's invisible before it gets to that part or something. I don't know. Uh, something between me and it, and so it's not from the camera to it. I don't know. Just got to double check and make sure that that, uh, in the ray, that that's what's being selected or is available. So canvas focus, we definitely were getting past that because we got the ID to this point. Or did we? I'm going to have it check two levels. mouse over and then if it has an ID that it mouses over it'll tell us what it is okay so that's the admin part that is okay point over trigger see we're telling it mouse over mold on Pointer over trigger. We should be getting mouse overs on everything, then we just decide what we want to use it for. So according to that, we should get the mouse over. Maybe it's just not selecting an object, which is possible too. Uh, based on where the mouse is though, I can do a ray through the pointer and actually detect what gets clicked so that we can find, oh I should have turned that off, I don't need to see which one of those every time now. I'm curious if we're getting our mouse overs. So, yeah, see mouse over up in the sky here, it did click one of them.
Okay, with them there, let's see. Okay, so I am getting a mouse over there. Let's see, it isn't when I hit the head even. And it's not doing anything more there. Let's see what this is. Because this one clearly catches something there. Let's see, these aren't. It's, gosh, it's so flaky of when it's going to actually click on that or not. Um, maybe it didn't like the fact that I'm telling it to be invisible at start and then I tell it to show up later. Let me just switch that and I want to double check and see. Well, well, the other part is I don't need to show each piece because we already know they each have an ID. So let me show each piece as it does it and then I can then I can tell it to yeah, I can just double check and see if the code that's telling it to be visible or not is interfering because maybe the visibility clears the pickable. So that would be something if it is. So the mouse over but the ID is not set. Hmm. Should have the ID. movement should be triggering every single thing I move over. Seems like it's catching... I don't know what it's catching, but it's not catching the avatars. Okay, so it had nothing to do with what's visible at the time. I'm not too worried about that piece then, if it didn't affect it anyway. Um, we know that we're setting all the parts. We know that some of them have materials, and we're telling them what to do with that. Adding our own coloring, if we have set it, it's all fine. I even set the parents here. Result meshes, this is where I'm registering the mouse overs for each one of the meshes. The other possibility is it could be happening um, well, there's a, is pickable, I gotta double check, if there's a, I know there's a collision check, and there's an is pickable selection on when you create an avatar, so let me get the, let me get Blender out here, and let's find out if, if there's an issue on that side of it, because whatever reason these objects aren't being selectable, there's a, that's a bigger problem. Um, avatars and I'll start with just one of them that I know and I've used many times uh, this one okay the settings for that are in here somewhere let's see it's It's pickable, so it is set to pickable. We can check collisions too, but that is a lot of extra checking. It doesn't hurt. Well, I wouldn't let it run into anything, but the other part is I'm putting some boxes inside of them that are used for designing where they're at. Uh, I'll worry about that later on. But it is set to pickable, see? And I think we have it for each. Even the eyes are pickable. Or Hats, shoes, okay. Yeah, see, it's set to pickable. That's what I thought. So that should automatically be brought into here and allow it to be pickable. And then the fact that I set it once again and reminded it that it's pickable is right here. So each mesh is pickable according to this. They each have a name. I'm registering the mouse over. I wonder if... This is something else that can happen. Sometimes when this shows up, it's not actually visible on the screen yet, even though it says it's going through each one of these. Um, well, I know I can go back to true on this, but even then, 
let me take this line and register the mouse over much later in the process here so that we're still in that same loop, same degree of depth, but it loads the animations first. That'll give it just a little bit more time. And I wonder if that has any effect on it. I think it's a timing issue more than anything because the settings are all correct. But I should be getting uh, mouse overs and it should know which piece it is when I select it. If I can't do a mouse over, how do I expect to do a click on it, right? like it's triggering mouse over sometimes but it's not catching it every time but the other part is the ID is coming up blank which means it's not gonna find it anyway hmm I could put an invisible box around each one of them and tell it when it picks the box it picks the object <laughs> that would be about as extreme double check as I could possibly get with this scene uh, but then, of course, I don't want to deal with that on everything. I just want it to be for when you pick these. I'm not sure why it's doing this. When I do the register mouse over, if mold's not null, I want to know And by the way, the mold is basically the mesh with the full wrapper of everything else that I'm adding to it. I kept it different on purpose because I wanted to be able to distinguish between when the game engine, for example, Babylon in this case, but um, when the game engine actually looks for, um, you know, describes a mesh or something, it's something that's already created on the scene pretty much. And the mold in my case is the wrapper for the mesh. It's all the details about it of when it'll appear on the scene based on where you're walking and everything else. Uh, the same way I did covering instead of just materials, covering is my wrapper of all the extra information I add to a material that's on your scene and everything else. So, so that's kind of how I put those pieces together. Um, okay. So, let me see. Come on, load up and get this in there. Uh, okay, it's not no. That's a good sign. I should say I have it tell me the ID of it so that I know each one of those pieces got added with their ID because that would make a difference too. Let's see, my ID's coming up blank. I still don't understand why the ID's coming up blank. Um, when I do this right here, this last ID, mouse on, oh, let me set in this one. Let me find out. This is what I should have been checking here. Let me find out if that's catching each one of these when they happen. Uh, because this never got set to that when it's under the pointer. Let me double check when that is, because that's a mouse over event. I'll double check when I'm setting that and see if I'm... Uh, it's kind of like that one. The current ID is the one that I'm not... I am purposely ignoring for certain other things, so I'm only getting the active elements and stuff, so maybe that's where my issue was. Let me refresh that and try that one more time. Oh, Mold Not Null, I should have added something there too. Let's find out. Mold Not Null equals Mold, should be Mold Name. Ah, let's go ID. Mold ID. By the way, name and ID, they tend to use it as the exact same thing in here, so I set them both and use them both. They have one time where you say, get mesh by ID, but then there's other times where it's looking for the name, so I just got used to setting them both. 
Okay, so it's setting each individual part. We're getting them by name, that's good. So I don't need to check that next time. They are getting past that step, which means we're registering the different items in the action manager. Okay, and then after that, when I move over one of these, now see it's not... Okay, off his surface, but yet it's like... It's like I can go over him and it's not there until it is. It's funny, it's catching it around here, around mid-center and stuff, but it's not catching it near the top of the person, like on their head. It's not even detecting that they're over the head. It's kind of strange. Hmm. I'm getting it when it's below the screen and he's not even on it. It's misaligned. It's finding them down here, even though they're here in the scene. And near the top of the heads, it's already missing them. There's something out of alignment. That is so weird. Usually if I move an object, even if it's animated, moves around the screen, the, the reference to that person moves with them. See, I'm getting, like right here, I'm finding the... Well, let's pick somebody that has... Okay, about... When I go down, I'm getting the hair right here. I'm getting the body, tops. Bottoms start bare, which are the shorts. And then the body, and shoes, way down here. Okay, so it's out of phase. It's out of phase from, what is it, camera view. Oh, I think I'm onto something. Um, it could be, Well, the active camera, see there's an active camera which is what we're looking through, then there's multiple cameras because at any point in time you can actually switch which camera view you're, you're looking at. So like a scene camera or there's a first person camera which we don't have an avatar selected yet so we won't do that one. But we have the follow camera, we also have a self camera which looks back at ourself. Um, this particular one I'm using the follow camera but the actual, hmm, I'm wondering if the active canvas that we're pulling these meshes from is not in correlation with the camera we switch to. That would explain why the mouse overs are phased out of place because another camera view sees them perfectly in line with that camera. And so we're using that as the active canvas to select from, but we're not using See, because now, even farther back, look how I can grab his hat. Wow, it refreshed when I did that. When I switched to the follow camera, it switched it. So, and notice how it's farther back from here. So the process I'm using to set the camera and put it in place for you to select your avatar did not set the active canvas. I'm onto something. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Aha moment. Okay, I'll take it. Oh, Bookus, you still with me? <laughs> Let's celebrate. Yay, there we go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so what's happening is this. I, I, I figured it out. Um, what happens is in this sequence, um, load setup mode, it comes in here. It sets a little square on the ground. It sets up all these avatars to be in relation to that point. And then it comes down here. 
There's a place where it sets the camera. Where is that place? Um, one of these places I set the camera. I gotta double check. Okay, I'm not setting the camera here. This is if you're, see look here, I've got if, if you're not logged in, it basically sets up two characters, which are the two robotic looking ones. If you are logged in, then it automatically sets up all these various uh, avatars, the 10 different ones for you to choose from. Um, let's see, now we have... Okay, so I didn't set the camera yet, which means... Here it is, set camera on avatar. That's the function I'm looking for. Um, no, that's the wrong one. Where am I setting my camera? Maybe that's my issue, is I didn't set my camera. Um, should be when I call this, so let's find out where I'm calling this code. It's gotta be one of the places where I call this and I tell it to load the setup mode, because when it puts all that stuff on it, it's also setting the camera. So it must be the step that leads to this, that does it. But that would explain it because basically it is doing the hover overs. It's just out of phase because the camera view is looking from this angle instead of this angle. So yeah, I just need to tell it which camera view to actually use and when it's selecting. So we have load setup mode and then we have two places that call it. That one set camera on avatar right before it. So. This one is open change avatar. I'm not setting the camera mode. Where am I doing it? Set camera on avatar is basically doing the self view because it's after you select your avatar that you can set your colors and different things like that. So this one is loading the setup mode, but change avatar. And that should be called from the code. I'm just trying to see where I actually set the camera view. It may be the opening scene. It could be. Uh, I'm just trying to backtrack it, because I know that's the piece that it needs to be done from. search okay and we're only calling this from one place right here um, this is switch avatar menu that is Display name, close select avatar, toggle avatar, color, okay, those are all fine. This case right here. So even at this point, I have not actually, I have not actually done it. Okay, I need to find where this is happening. When I init the environment, what I do is I come down here, it creates the various cameras, and then it gets the session avatar, where if it doesn't find the avatar, um, it'll try to do a saved avatar and pull that first, and then if you are logged in, it initiates, initiates your whole session. Uh, but this get saved avatar is where it triggers it to do it. I just want to see... We should have a camera thing that happens before this. And it is... Well, there's our canvas, so if we haven't... There's creating the engine, so it's after this. Avatar. Okay, it goes and gets it if they have it. If not, it does this stuff. Set avatar on cam our camera on avatar. Um, close select avatar, switch camera, 
this is the one I think it's using. I know it runs this process, and I know it's not finding my avatar because we haven't set one yet. Avatar is not known. Avatar equals that. Set camera on uh, and load setup mode. It's okay. Let's try to set camera on avatar. That shouldn't have been that, but. Actually, let me try to find it in this file first. Set camera, camera on avatar. Hey, Mr. Waffles. How you doing, Mr. Waffles? Let's see. You know I'm here. If you see the stream, it won't load. Just letting you know I'm here. If you can see this stream, won't load. My stream won't load? Yeah, so when I first started my stream, uh, for whatever reason, it didn't put me in the science category and it didn't, you know, do my, my tags and stuff, so tried it again to start the stream again just so we could see if that happens and yeah Lucas was helping me there um, oh the cafe internet gotcha <laughs> Gabs hacked me <laughs> yeah right <laughs> well I'd rather somebody like that tell me that it can be hacked than to somebody else that I don't know <laughs> or don't know of sorry but yeah you're right totally right <laughs> Still not in category. Okay, something's going on weird with the settings then on the site because I always had it there. Um, let me check my dashboard, creator dashboard. Not sure why it's doing that because I've always been in that category. That's so weird. Um, stream info. Oh, you're right. You totally. Okay. Yeah, I don't even know when they dropped that, but yeah, I guess it was on the settings in uh, directly in here. Okay, so now I'm in that category. So weird. So strange. Shouldn't have been an issue, but I don't know. Um, fuck the web. What did you think of my ideas on Trillo? Oh yeah, definitely. No, I like it. I like it what you did, and I also added a few more that you sparked my memory on a couple things. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, definitely. Thanks for uh, thanks for those ideas. It does does work. Um, yeah, I've got some things I got to do for sure. Uh, but I also added a few more notes on there, so we have a few things. Uh, that I added, um, let me see if I can bring that up. So what we have is this, what we're talking about. Um, the cool part is it does put it down here where we can see, <laughs> change the background of the board, cool. Um, also make it so an admin can be logged in from multiple computers for using Blender on a more powerful station to idea. Okay, okay, I see where you're going with that. Um, Okay, and also, let's see, some of the things, um, yeah, I've been typing in here too, but yeah, uh, spawn areas. Dog, we definitely need spawn areas. Um, even in the book Snow Crash uh, from Neil Stevenson, the book even mentioned that the more people you get in a scene, 
the le the more it annoys you when all of a sudden somebody just appears right in front of you. So it's better to have certain areas like almost look like they're walking out of a subway or if they're uh, spawning out of a you know some type of tele transport uh, thing. Uh, we could even do Stargate where it's like a you know some type of arch and you walk out from underneath the arch or something or whatever it is. But yeah, spawn areas for sure. Yeah, Bocus definitely. Um, that would make a good difference. I like I like that idea. The other part is this. Um, I was thinking, just like Star Trek uh, Next Generation, for example, what they like to do is they have the arch before you go into their holo deck, and basically you can get into the arch and you can say, hey, this is what I'm looking for, and then walk in, and it's your scene. I was thinking something like that, where you could go from one community to the next. So one scene to the next. So like in my scene, if I have one of these arches, I could walk in there, type where I want to go or something, which could be just a URL. But then instead of having to completely reload the page and show the new URL, you walk into the tunnel and by the time you come out of a small tunnel, it's already reloaded all the way around you right to the spawn point. Yeah, that way I can monitor from my Mac, but also be on my desktop developing buildings and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, I like that idea. Um, the admin login. You also had some other great ideas about, um, well, I think uh, even uh, YouTube admin added a couple things about being able to, well, you have it here. Maybe have a flying vanish mode for admins so we can move around more quickly and teleport to people we might think are sketchy. You know, that's cool. And in addition, what if an admin could look at a whole list of people that are in a scene, click on one of them, and you assume their camera view so you can see what they're looking at. That's kind of cool too. Or even the selfie view so you can see what that user looks like. So you could put the camera right on a particular user, see from their view, see from this view, or if it's a selfie view, and be able to switch your camera to a particular user. I think that'd be a really good, yeah, more camera angles. Um, I've got to do a lot of work on cameras. I think that's going to be just a day on its own, maybe even a week. But there's a lot of camera cleanup to do. Um, one of the things I was having trouble with is where it parents the camera. For whatever reason, it wasn't parenting. So I need to double check the code and see if they put out an update that fixed it yet from Babylon. But um, I was able to parent certain things like if I'm in my scene, I can actually tell it to uh, go to first person view. Well, all the animation of my character actually plays on the camera because I parent it to the head of the character. So it actually moves with the head. Um, but when you go to follow view, obviously it doesn't do that, which I want it to be that way. Uh, there's, there's some things, but then if I go to, while you're in first person view and I switch it to VR mode or something, it wouldn't parent that camera to the head. So I got a little bit of stuff I got to do to fix those. Um, but that'll be a separate day, just working on cameras in their cells. Um, and we can work on the bugs and issues with the different scenes. Yeah, definitely. Um, we've spotted quite a few things. In fact, I'm working on one right now and I think we're onto it. What happened is this. Uh, when I load and I'm going to choose my avatar, uh, we finally detected what's happening here. Uh, so now it's just a matter of tracking it down so I can fix it. Oh, you're going to go through that? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, what it is, I did a brand new install and I'm actually checking the different things. Um, by the way, another day I'll be working on just the avatars, clean up the sizes of the files, especially the graphics, so that they load a lot faster. Right now they're too big. Each individual avatar is way too big, so I need to see if I can't make them smaller, make the files smaller, make it more effective, and clean up that area. But that'll be like a blender day where I'm working on that. Um, but yeah, so when they load on here, notice if I go around his head, it's not even there. But watch what happens when I move down. And right there, it's actually selecting his top, which is his shirt. Then it selects his body. Then it selects still body. And notice down here, that's the bottoms, which are the pants. And then even lower than that, I can't get that far low on the screen, but the pants are like way down here. So what happened was, <laughs> yeah, right. But his, what happened is this, um, we're looking at here and notice that we can't select anything by the head. It turns out the camera view that I'm selecting from is 
the canvas is lined up with that camera view, I switched camera views and the canvas didn't move with it. So I'm looking at this angle at the characters, the camera that has the canvas um, clicking and overlays is from this angle. So the person isn't even coming in, like right here, his hat, it thinks it's at this angle right here. So, and I can prove it because if I go here and I change it to, for example, scene camera, and then I go back to follow camera, now they're right on. So the items are in the, the items are in the screen like they should be. The, everything else is pretty much where it should be, but the pick that's happening uh, you attach a canvas in the code is what happens. So like if I bring open this cameras file, whenever I switch a camera, there's a couple things I do. Um, that's load primary camera. Okay, load camera settings, uh, switch camera. Every time I switch a camera, what I'm actually doing is this. I tell it which camera view to use. I set any offsets for like how far away it is and whatever angle they're gonna be. I decide if it's which camera the anaglyph or the VR or the VR with a gamepad for example and then I set any random positions depending on which camera it is and finally I set it to active cameras but at the very bottom of all this or even before the scene one of the things it does is I also tell it into this file Okay, so camera to use for pointers and then I set the act of camera to it what's happening is the pointers are lined up on a different camera so that's why we're getting them on the rare, wrong angle so what I'm looking for is where to set this where is it setting my camera and then basically to tell it to be the active camera uh, for the pointers so that they line with what you're seeing so that's what happened Okay, so let's see. Okay, Waffles. Um, also, uh, will there be a way you can test stuff? Because admin was asking if he could join my screen, but I don't want other admins in my screen messing stuff up, you know. Um, they can join your scene, the ones that you've published, but... Um, and they can, on their computer, be in admin mode. And if you gave them admin mode on your scene, uh, they can log in, they can go to your scene, and they can be in the same scene you are. So they can join you in a scene if, um, if they're admin on your instance of it. Okay? So, and then let's see, if you're working on a building or something. Yeah, in fact, they can be in there and they can actually help you work on it and stuff. And, um, you know, the only thing is it's gonna be, let's see, and you'll see them in the screen if you have your multi-user on when it's fixed. I've been making a lot of changes to the avatars, so that's another day I have to work on just the multi-user, by the way. Um, yeah, we can work on stuff when you're home too. We'll jump in together and, and I'll be working on things. But right now I'm just cleaning up this part here so that you can select your avatar and you can get, you know, get into the scenes and the install works better. Then I'm gonna post that back out to the changes out to uh, out to GitHub. And I will also update your instance so that you get the latest greatest and this part's fixed for you. Um, yeah, yeah, we can go over all the Blender stuff too. Yeah, no problem. Definitely. That's really cool. Yeah, no, cool. I definitely like the bug reports. I like putting them onto the page where you were doing this. Uh, we can put them in the Trello page. Uh, that's a great place to... Uh, Trello, if I say it right. Yeah, we can put them in here so that we mark the different bug things that need to be done. Um, I did find a couple things like we want to make sure we avoid brute force attacks on logins. So I need to do something that counts the number of attempts and locks you out for a period of time. If you have tried too many attempts in a row, that'll pretty much stop brute force attacks or at least slow them down to a real crawl. Um, so yeah, so there's some stuff like that I definitely need. So I added that on here. Um, also, just to put the note, we need to make sure that we have the default really high graphic uh, scenes ready to go. 
We need 3D scenes, we need 3D buildings, and some 3D things, and even some 3D stores ready to go, so that people can go in there and say, I want a 3D store, click, click, and here's their 3D store. So that, that kind of stuff we need to have in place. I need to replace these. When you do the install, um, they're really old samples that I created, and I did it with the older technology before I even updated and were able to use things from Blender. So the more I do that, the more we need to add those pieces in there. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, we've got a lot of things we've added onto here. Um, I need to make it where you can sit down and then when you move your keys and stuff, you can like rotate in your chair or you can uh, step up and stand up out of your chair or sit down, you know, whatever you need to do. I need to be able to do things like that. Uh, there's a bunch of pieces that I want to put in place. So, so we'll keep on working on those different things, but we can always add them onto the site here. Uh, if other people have ideas, you can tell one of us and or if you have access here. Um, I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure Bookus probably has access to all this stuff here, and that's good if he does, of course. I uh, just moved the other guys from the Trello board. I hope you don't mind because they weren't very active much. Okay, no worries. We can add people that are going to be active. We can also, they can also tell us what should be there. We can do whatever we need to, so I'm not worried, um, you know. If they're actively involved, then definitely they're actively involved. Uh, so I'm, I'm right with, there with you. Okay, and let's see. Um, administration with owners and co-owners. Uh, yes, in fact, you can create other users right now. Even in the app, um, when you go to the admin, one of the things you have options for is users. And when you bring up your users, right now it's just me in this because I just created a new instance. But one of the things you can do is you can click add new. And when you type it in here, it gives you a sample of a password, but you can change it, do whatever you want with there. I should do a little button that shows and hides the password. <laughs> right now it's, I'm not creating this user, so it doesn't matter. But, um, but yeah, we can also do it where it automatically emails the password to the user. So we can do some stuff on that. That only works if they set up a um, email server, you know, the settings for email server, which I'm starting to set up here. I didn't finish it. And it's work in progress like most stuff on here. Okay, so, um, but that's the user section. Uh, yeah, so you can go in here and create users, make them admin if you want them admin, or they can also have access to just a certain thing. Um, have a nice run. Get the business, I'll, I'll see you later. So, okay, yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, thanks for stopping by, Waffles. I'll catch you on your stream later on today and talk with you also in between. Uh, we'll catch up. I'm on Discord and everything, so yeah, we'll catch up. Okay, good deal. Um, but yeah, so just so you know, we can add users and we can also set them to just a particular community, a particular building, or a particular thing. So you can set your permissions as granular as you like. They don't all have to be like admin users type thing. You can actually set it where on this community, so-and-so is going to help me on my site and you can add just their permissions to do just that. Nothing else, but then they would be able to do that community and add things to it and stuff. So we do have the granular positions above and beyond the users that you you know use in here and stuff. Um, all your users will show up. Uh, you have user roles. User roles basically tell you if you get the access to the admin section or not and different levels of stuff. So that's, that's what we have so far. Um, we'll keep on adding to it, but that stuff is in there. Okay, I need to take about a five minute break and I'm gonna uh, refill the coffee cup. It's a little chilly in here and I like warm coffee, so or hot coffee. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to come back and finish fixing this section because we do know it could be right here because this is where I'm setting the load primary camera and the second I load it we may need to, well it says active pointers there. Um, it's when I go to that mode that I need to make sure that I set the active camera again to use active pointers to the scene's active camera. So I'll just double check that piece and we'll get that in thing. So need to eat, yeah, yeah, okay, thanks, Bookus, and I will be right back. So how about about a five minute break? Five minute-ish, and I'll see you in a minute.
Okay, I'm back and just chugging right back at it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I do have a pedometer on my phone and I keep on doing steps. Part of it in the morning is it's cold in here and I'm just keeping warm, keeping my hands from freezing over. <laughs> and also that's what the coffee is for. But uh, yeah. I know, I'm, I say I'm cold. I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. It is probably, let's see what the temperature is here. The temperature is, <laughs> you guys aren't gonna like this. Um, it's 50 degrees, 53 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> it's not very cold. <laughs> so it's not that bad, but at the same time, yeah. Hands get cold on the keyboard, doesn't matter hands get frozen stiff so either way okay so we're back at this thing we're gonna find out why we need this scene camera to use for pointers and we're gonna find out exactly what's going on when we load these different pieces because load camera settings that one's fine switch cameras fine we have one particular one where we do set camera on avatar this is not it not it active cameras equal to follow camera but we didn't set scene active cameras to use the pointer for that that may be the only place it is let me find out it's really easy to tell because it's going to be when i refresh this page we should know if it's the right one or not okay so we're loading them up and I think that's all it was. Can you believe it? Just knowing where to put the darn thing. For example, when they all load here, they're not loading the way I want them to yet. They're still coming in in chunks of the meshes as they come through. Um, I'd like to know that all the meshes are loaded and then make it come in using the transport thing. But notice I can grab his hat now and I can get him by the top of the head and it switches the cursor to the one it's supposed to. So it's actually pick and it's off the feet. See, we got his shoes, we got his shoes. Okay, the cursor's now lined up with the right camera. That's what the problem was. Yay, we fixed something. <laughs> That's always a good sign, right? Okay, now that I've fixed something, let me clear out some of my telltales that were helping us troubleshoot it. And our cameras, I don't think I set one over here either. Okay, we're good there. The avatars, I moved this, but we didn't need to, so I'm gonna put that register the mouse over back where it was. Don't need it there. And there's nothing else here spitting anything out to the screen, which means my input, this is where I have these particular pieces. Um, See current ID equals mesh under pointer name. So we are setting this. That was pulling the last one. So whatever it was over before. Because I have to do that so that I can clear the old one on the mouse out. Um, just a trick. Sometimes it wasn't tracking what I was leaving. So or it overlap landing on something over something I left. So that way I was able to track using those global variables what it was on last before it hits the next item. Okay, mouse under pointer, and I'm using name in this case. Probably could use ID there, but it's doing the same thing, and everything pretty much has both set. So I'm not going to worry about that so much right this moment. If we start running into trouble, then we'll do it. Welcome back. Welcome back, Lucas. Oh, okay, so by the way, I found it, and what it is is in the basic avatar, no, in the load avatars class, there's the load setup mode, and at the very bottom of it, oh, not that one. Next setup mode. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. We were doing this step. It's in the load. Uh, you set the avatar, the cameras, avatar cameras. Uh, so that's uh, down here. Set camera on avatar. When I did that, I was setting the follow camera to be the active camera, but I did not have that camera to use pointers 
going to that latest active camera. So I was switching the camera without telling the pointers to also use the active the camera that we're using right now. So yeah, that would do it every time. Second I put it in place, now even if I get in by the head, see it's even by the hat, I can get shoes and it knows exactly where I am at all times. So definitely found it and yay. Welcome back. Welcome back, Waffles. And yes, we just fixed the problem with selecting the avatars. So now the camera is using the right, or for pointers, is the active camera. Fix the problem. What'd you miss? I solved an issue. <laughs> See now, now I can select, look, it's on his hat, it's on his shoes, body, tops, you know, it's basically selecting them and notice that it also goes to the selection tool with the with the hand. So we we now have the hover. Why isn't hers? What's going on with this one? Oh, it is. It's there. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so basically now it is selecting each one of them as we go over it. <laughs> okay, so that selection process is now better. I'm going to take out the code that was giving us all of our little feedback and making sure to knock that out of place because we don't need it here anymore. Okay, I don't think I left anything else up here. Okay, all my telltales. I can check for them later, but let's see if we got past that one. <laughs> Switching cafes like socks. <laughs> you got that right. And even if they had a good download stream, uh, speed, they definitely would never have a good upload speed, right? It's not like you could stream well from there or something. Okay, so now these guys, I can yeah, I can already tell because the cursor changes to the hand when I'm selecting over people. So, I by the way, I keep picking this guy only because I've already worked on his graphics and he loads a little faster than some of the other ones. Uh, so I'll work on the graphics for the other characters and make sure that they're all just as fast. But that's why I keep picking him. And then when I select him, it should reload him as my character. I don't know what's taking a long time. There he is. But the camera view is wrong. So there's something wrong with the picking. I need to now tell it, when you do that, to switch to... Well, no, actually, when you switch to colors or something, or animations, that's when it switches. Okay, so you've got your character and you can walk around in the scenes, everything's good to go. So that works to that degree. Um, then you can come in here, you can change your display name because you're logged in. You can also change your colors. Uh, you can either select it here, like for example, the um, pants color, or if you click it here, it'll do the same thing. So you can pick it here or here and it'll automatically select it. And notice our, it looks like our selection tool is in place here. So whatever reason that other one wasn't, we now have it in place. Uh, let's see, this internet cafe opens 24 seven. It is worse than Starbucks. <laughs> Come on, you need a good cup of coffee and you need good internet. Those are the two things that go good together, right? Starbucks Wi-Fi is actually good in my country. But if you stay too long, they'll turn off the Wi-Fi. Oh, really? <laughs> You're being a Wi-Fi hog, huh? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> uh, cannot set property class name of null. That's interesting. When did that happen? When I clicked here? Okay. So when I click here, yeah. Either one, it's catching on both. I'll fix that error. We'll go in there. Um, you know, what was that admin thing you were talking about, like the permissions last time before I left? Okay, what happens is this. In the admin menu, we have users, and you can actually add new users to be admin on your site. They can help you work on sites and everything else. At the same time, for any community or building or thing, when you're working on that, we also have specific permissions that you can give a user to work on just that item. So you don't have to give them access to your whole admin. You can basically, in options and settings, under anything that you load, when you go to options and settings, 
there's permissions. And if you set these permissions, you can have a particular user on your system. Uh, you can add them to be either a dev or an admin for that particular site. But it, it's only that particular item. So it's permission levels on everything and then system level permissions are these ones over here. So these users are your system level. Okay, so quick easy way to add people permission to certain areas. Um, I think I need this list to show both though so you can see who has what right in here. I think I'll work on that. Um, So that's the permissions thing, yeah. So so this page, I think we can improve this one. Um, on users list, admin, uh, show permissions to each 3D object, which means communities, buildings, and things. So it would be able to quick list showing you where they are instead of having to hunt and decide, you know, instead of having to go open the item and then see the permissions on each level, we'll just show them all here so that they can be set. Uh, the other part is when you add new, I should be able to, well, I gotta hide that permit, I gotta hide the password, uh, and then have a button to show it if we need to. Um, the other part would be, it would be good if we could set which item here, maybe from a drop down, if it's a particular commit, uh, Getting bufferings like every five seconds? Oh, man, that's rough. That is torture. No, I get it. I wouldn't put up with that either. <laughs> I'm with you. I totally agree. But I. But thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, of course. Of course, you tried. You tried. Hey, it's all effort, in my opinion. It's all good. It's all good. So no worries there. We'll take care of it. Okay, so when you're editing your user, though, let's go back to that. Anytime you want, you can go back to edit my avatar. And like in this case, the colors. And when you click on something, then it'll automatically show it. It's showing an error here, so I'm going to find out what's going on with that. Or at least suppress the error if it's not affecting anything. Um, that would be in the common code or no, load avatar per site. It'd be in here. And that's where it is. Let's see, what is it doing? Um, it gets the avatar part, class name of the piece. Um, okay, so what that's doing is it's setting the class of these sections in here. Uh, wow, that has an extra piece there. That's not a mesh. How funny, shouldn't have picked that up. This should only be the meshes in here. That one shouldn't be an actual mesh. I'll make sure of that. I'll double check that. Okay, so um, what I can do is class name of null. Easiest fix for that would be if this is not equal null. Simple as that. Uh, it means that it didn't have a section in there, even though we think they should all have, all the pieces should have a name on that list. Um, obviously I have something that isn't on the list. I probably suppressed it when I created the list. So now I'll make sure, avatar pieces, I should have had where I loaded that someplace here. Let me find out. Probably worded it the same way if I'm consistent enough. Well, okay, so yes, that's a really good question. Since this is running on browsers, uh, do you need to worry about if some parts will work or not on different browsers? Yes and no. Of course, that's always in the back of our minds and we always check things and stuff like that. In fact, I have already run into some things that didn't work on one browser or another, and I had to find different code that would work on all browsers. The good news is this is all HTML5 technology, so I'm not worried about any browser that doesn't use HTML5. 
So that already cuts out a lot of the issues with compatibility and everything. Um, because you don't have to worry about, you know, early versions of IE and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, old Netscape and different things that aren't even a competitor anymore or whatever. The old versions, you don't have to worry about it because WebGL only is active and works on HTML5. This whole technology uses the canvas, which is HTML5. Uh, so just to get, the, get it to up and running, you would have to have HTML5. So once we drew that line there, it's not actually that hard to find code that works on all browsers. So as long as you're conscious of that piece of it, it tends to work well. Um, there are certain commands I've avoided or, or I've substituted certain JavaScript instead of other JavaScript because of you know, different browsers. Um, a good example, even when I put an image on a screen, if I want it to have if I want, when you put your mouse over something to tell you a word, like an alt tag, like an image does, then I had to set the alt tag and the title tag because some browsers use title, opposed to some using alt. Um, so I've already accounted for some things like that in the stuff uh, whenever you're working with things. So that's just kind of, you know, some of the pieces that I, I do. Let's see, we can change the colors. It'll automatically update the guy. Oh, also this focus on that's what's making it highlight things as you move your mouse over them. So like if I had a lot of pieces close together, I could use this little focus on thing. And now when I put my mouse over things, it tells me which object I have selected opposed to the other objects. So it's kind of a tool to be able to select things, especially if they're close together. But honestly, I don't need it most of the time. <laughs> it actually gets in the way. So I don't know where this is coming from. I'm getting this ghost image of this over here. That right there shouldn't be there. I need to figure out where that's coming from because I'm I'm only drawing this one on the page and then when I do this it's doing some ghost thing over here it should only have this one over here in fact it even has the same color setting see it's even tied to it so it's almost like it's drawing it twice instead of once so yeah let me see what I can do about that I think it's I think there's something weird going on where this is doing this ghost image so another thing to track down, we've already fixed this one. I think I can refresh the page and do that. Um, let's see, okay, so other camera view, I'm just uh, blind guessing. Yeah, we have different camera views. Um, there's a couple things I have in place. I need to work on cameras for a full day and just get it all worked out. But for example, I can switch the camera view for like first person and it'll It'll attach to his head. Um, you know, he's not loading very fast. It's almost like the animations aren't coming through. Come on, finish what it's doing. There it goes. Now the animations are going. Uh, when I moved to first person, notice I'm getting the movement of the head. So I actually attached it to parent the camera right to the actual head as it moves. That way we get the feel of running with it or walking with it. You know, like like right now, I have a walk that he actually looks behind him as he walks. So as I go backwards, for example, oh no, I don't. Oh, it's a different scene. There's a back backwards where it'll actually turn his head backwards and you can actually see where he's backing up. Uh, the other thing is we have the follow camera. We have a scene camera, which just kind of backs up the follow camera so you can see more of the view. Um, Oh good, yeah, the physics. It took a while to get that to do it, and I'm still working on some things, but that's that's kind of where I'm heading. It'll also do VR just by clicking on it, and it has one that's uh, VR with the gamepad. Um, the other thing is um, VR camera. For example, Oculus. What it has is this. It actually designed different cameras and it gives you the definitions for a bunch of them uh, where you can actually you can fine-tune them and create your own cameras that are for a particular VR headset or they have certain ones that are already set up like this where we have Vive, Oculus, Windows, Gear VR, Daydream and Generic we can have those as drop downs in the menu so I can have them already set up and then in the scene all you have to do is choose them from the menu and you'll automatically use that particular setup. 
So they're already defined, it already knows the joysticks, it already has the controllers, it already has all the pieces that work with it, and all we have to do is select it. So those are things I'm going to be adding when I work on the cameras. Uh, the other part is this. Um, let me jump back to 2D view for a minute. If I go to, for example, first person, and then I try to do it, it wasn't parenting to the head like my first person camera was. So right now I just disabled it, but I need to fix those kind of things. The only one that's really, you know, the follow camera goes to all the different views, like the 3D glasses, you know, the poor man's VR, right? <laughs> so it will divide everything in the red blue and by distance and everything else. Um, even then, it actually has settings for how close together your eyes are and to focus it. So we could have all kinds of cool controls that help on these things. The other part is I do have a second camera, so I can set that to like the scene camera or if I want it to be first person up there. I didn't attach that to the parent yet, that's why I said I need to work on cameras for a day. But I can set that to follow camera and change this one to something else. Or I can do self camera and he's looking at it himself while he walks around and does stuff. So I do have a couple different camera views. The other thing is I have not generated an actual scene view that is the layout. So like a map view. Map view would be very cool. But what I need to do is I need to determine which objects in the scene are like a slice at his height. Because if you're on a second level of a building, it may have different walls than the first level if um you know so that kind of stuff or if there's like a rooftop i don't want to just see from the roof view i need to determine the walls that are around them and everything else so that's the kind of thing that i still need to design that would be actually really cool to have a map view up here and show where your position is and as you're walking around where the walls are or other characters and stuff you know we need to do some things like that yeah i think it'd be cool um we do have we have some cool stuff. Um, you can actually take a ray and split between things and find out everything at your level. So I could take a ray, I could spin it in a circle, for example, and check everything that it intersects with at my height. And then just put those things into the map view that are at my height. That kind of stuff can be done. So that would be a really cool way to determine all the walls, uh, that you need to show or different objects that would be in the map view. I don't know, but there are some things we can do to slice it. Um, we, there's some studying I can do to really make that great, but, uh, but definitely, you know, cause then once you get into map view, the other thing you could do is like fog of war. Hey, if you haven't explored over there, maybe it doesn't show it yet and you have to walk over there and uncover it. That kind of promotes people checking out the whole map, the whole city or whatever it is that we're building. So fog of war would be a good idea too. put that in there and make it where, you know, as you're walking around, it's uncovering in the map view, the areas that you haven't seen. Yeah, exactly. We played enough games. We know how that should go. The idea is to figure out how to do it in this. Um, I know that some people have taken scenes already and they've actually created the map views from them. So they may have tools in Babylon where you could say, hey, slice at this height and tell me what the you know profile of the place looks like at that height or something. You know, it may have things like that. I don't know. But we can definitely look into that. But yeah, so we do have the second camera. We can do whatever we want with that. Um, it's all following the avatar. Uh, the other thing that's really helpful that I've done is um, even when you're working in this stuff, you can take at any time in this little quick editor settings. First of all, you can right click anything in a scene and it'll bring it up and you can move it around. Um, like here, I can even take the scale of this building and shrink it or make it larger or whatever. So I can scale it in XYZ coordinates all three directions. Uh, if you just hold down the mouse, it'll go in that direction. You can also, you can also use the bigger numbers to make it grow a lot faster, a lot quicker. You know, so we can create whatever we want. The other part is you can also rotate it. So if it's not exactly where you want it, you can rotate the building. Uh, you can rotate in all three axes. So some of it, of course, makes more sense than others. <laughs> you know, so it will, it will do whatever you want. What it is is this. If you picture in every scene you go to, I created 
a one by one by one cube. And that is what I call the connecting grid. That is the reference point where everything else is aligned to it and scaled to it. So on the scene, I put it on that connecting grid and then I scale like my um, terrain. I'll scale it to that connecting grid. Then when I say I want to put a building right here, I put a connecting grid there. It's almost like dropping a pin on the scene. That's a one by one by one cube where it's going to build that building. Then I can scale, I, I parent everything in that building on that cube. What happens is as I take that cube and scale, rotate it or position it, it moves this whole building. So in this case, this building is sitting on a one by one by one cube which by the way is decided right here. And as I change this, I'm changing the one by one by one cube. And since that's parented to it, every part of it scales with it. The good news is the animation scale with it too. So even if you have an animated object, it scales proportional to that parenting at the same time. So Babylon did a really good job at that piece. Um, also, if you don't wanna just sit here and push the buttons and try to you know, make this the right size and everything else, you can type numbers and as soon as it loses focus on that column, uh, it, will, it will snap to the size that you set it. So you can do that. Um, and that works for any of these. So, and of course, you don't even have to be on the ground. Ooh, and you can walk right underneath it. No. <laughs> okay. And you can save it or you can cancel, which would automatically put back whatever you moved. Puts it right back where you started because it remembers everything, all your settings before you make your changes. Then if you save them, it commits them and also writes it to the database. So next time it loads, it's using the new settings. Uh, the other thing is um, it also loads things as you walk up. If you look inside the door here, when he walks up there, um, there's what'll happen is I'm going to run just so we get there faster. Let's see, like when we walk up here, all of a sudden the ramp showed up in front of him in there. And if I walk backwards, it disappears. If I go over here to these settings, I've got this section called zones. If I turn that on, notice we've got a zone in front of us. It highlighted this box area right here. What I did was that has, it's called a loading zone in my case. And what it does is when it detects that your avatar's inside this box, so the second it detects that we're inside, it goes out, decides what objects need to be seen, and it loads them. If it's, um, if it's something where it's a new building or whatever, it'll actually go out on the internet, pull back those objects, bring them back, and then load them into your scene, including the textures on them and everything. So that's, that's the design of being able to do that, um, you know, and add things as you walk around. Same thing happens for the outside of the castle. If I move back far enough, I hit a different zone and it kind of adds it and removes it as you do that too. Hey, I'm trying to visualize 4D weather data. Will 3D data with time? Any advice? Well, you know something? Um, one of the things that I was thinking about doing in here, and in fact, I've already got it written into my patent and stuff, but, but one of the things that I plan to do and that would be helpful for you is if I created a slider across the bottom of the scene where it's basically real time is right in the middle and that's where we are, but you could at any point back up in time and, or maybe even real times over here. And then you back up in time just by moving the slider and it can re, you know, back up your data where it actually takes you down um, a path backwards. Then you can actually set up weather in the scene that actually matches real weather if you needed to or something. And, uh, you know, the other part is this thing has all kinds of particle systems is what it calls. You can create particle systems that actually generate clouds and they look like real clouds. Uh, because each little dot makes up the mist and everything else. You can create mist, you can create rain, you can create, uh, you can move the, the lighting of the sun to come from different angles. Um, there's all kinds of stuff we can get to in this. I'm not quite there yet to be able to do to the extreme you're talking about, but it definitely would be able to simulate and create things. Uh, if you wanted to, you could build yourself like LA, a city, have the skyline there and everything else and then show the weather come over the top of it. He wouldn't be able to do that. It's already capable of doing the different individual pieces. You just have to add some code to actually add the weather. Um, I plan on actually having it where we can set the time zone and making it be day and night 
in relative terms to when it's when it's uh, you know when it is in the real place. So, but we have different things like we can turn on the zones of what so you can see where they are when you're building things. Uh, the other part is there's these things called merged objects where I did a for example a cube here in the doorway. I did a cube in this doorway and I told it to cut it out of the round object which is the doorway. And so what happens is if I take and I tell it to, I can view this. Uh, let's see if I can grab it now. Ah, it's not letting me grab it. It's not switching. I'll work on that. Uh, you know, there's all these things I'm checking and finding and doing and fixing. Uh, but what happens is you can basically uh, take that box, you can move it, and it'll change where the cutout is in the wall. Um, you can also take new boxes and tell it to be cut out of another object. So it allows you to build things. Um, but that's the merged objects. Focus is when you want to be able to see which thing you're highlighting so you can move your mouse around on different objects and edit them. And then the avatar camera, this is kind of cool. But when you're building things, let's say I'm building this building and I haven't put a doorway in yet. It's really cool because you can actually turn off or separate the camera from your avatar. He's wherever loads at that particular point in time, but now I can pass through walls, I can turn around, I can add things to it, I can build and everything else without having to be anchored to my actual avatar. And when you're done and you want to move around and check out something new, all you have to do is click the avatar camera back, and now you're back on your avatar and you're walking with your guy again. So it has some cool features for being able to edit stuff. Uh, the other part is whenever you're editing something, let me back up off this path here, and let's say if I right click on the object, it selects it and it shows you these lines. Well, bigger objects, it's really great to see what you're selecting. It helps you line up. So like, for example, when it's off the ground and I want to see where it extends and it's going to hit the ground, it makes it really easy to see where that item is going to line up. So it's a, it's a useful tool in doing that kind of stuff. But at the same time, if it's a small object, sometimes these lines get in the way. All you have to do is click the lines on or off and you can still be editing something without showing those lines in the way. So there's some tools like that. And I can say cancel and it'll put it all back where it was. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of stuff that's built into the system. You can add or um, add any building or community or communities are the scenes. Buildings are, they don't even have to be a physical building. It could be just like an area where you play soccer. It could be a game. It could be anything you want to define an area. You call it a building just so that it's a modular section of the map. And when you do that, we can have it where it loads certain animations when you walk in. For example, if I'm going to play soccer, he needs to be able to kick the ball. He needs to be able to dribble. He needs to be able to block the ball if he's the goalie or something. And so we can set up certain things. Uh, so it loads animations just by walking in. And then it unloads them when he walks away from that area. That's the kind of stuff that makes this 3D browsing. It's actually loading things as you walk and unloading things as you walk away. That way, I don't load too much and I can keep on going. Like right now, I don't need what's inside that building until I come over here and then all of a sudden, yeah, I need the steps. I want to get upstairs. So now I get the steps in the scene and I can run up the steps. And in this case, a ramp. I did a cheap, quick way when I built the castle. I didn't bother building steps. I've done them in a lot of other scenes though. So, so that's the kind of stuff we're working on. It'll keep getting better. It does have gravity, so I can drop down to the bottom floor. Okay, and he's got his run. It's really cool because you can also set a bunch of stuff about your character. Um, you can edit your avatar, and one of the things you can do is you can pick the animations. Like when you enter the scene, you can choose what type of a kind of a teleporting animation that you want it to use. For example, transport rings. Now, when I come into a scene, and so I'm just going to reload the scene just so you can see when it happens. It'll use whatever animation you picked. I've got to fix the cameras. They're not even pointing the right direction yet, but as soon as he starts to come in, it's the direction he's facing. But, oh, it didn't do it. It did a fast pop. Hold on. Why did it? Oh, it remembered it here. It didn't load it. Okay, uh, another thing to check out, I guess. Um, let me see if there's, oh, there's the rings. 
it loaded there. Oh, I forgot. We, when we were working on that section, I told it to show visible. So it wasn't done loading, and it was still going to do the transport rings. It just didn't get to it yet. Okay, that's how he'll fade in when he comes into the scene. But in our code, when I bring up the basic avatar, I do not want him to show until he's supposed to show. So let's get... Right there is visible, should be false. Up until he he's ready to be loaded, and then I use the system to bring him into the scene. Okay, so that'd, that'd do it. Okay, so that's the kind of stuff that we have there. Um, but yeah, 4D weather data. The other part is you would probably be able to use like the admin mode. I know to be able to step back and see the scene and see the weather coming over it and get a good bird's eye view. Um, you can also move the cameras out of your way and stuff, but, but stuff like that might help on a weather view, uh, when you're looking at things. So yeah, it depends how far you want to take it and what you want to do with it. But the way we designed the codes, just so you know, if you're a programmer is we have the base code. It allows you to do things. We're going to be able to fully do, um, multi-users in these scenes. We're going to be able to combine them. You're going to be able to build a building on one server and then drop it into another scene on a different server so it you know spins the internet and interconnects them. So things like that are going to work when I'm done here. But there's also a way to create plugins so you can actually add your own code to do something in your scenes. And if the plugins are great, you can also put them out there so that others can use your plugin. Uh, give them something for free and then just like WordPress, you could even pay to unlock other features or, you know, things in the scenes. So if you wanted to work on something that did weather, for example, that would be a really cool plugin to add to these scenes. So, Okay, so we have a bit of stuff here. Um, you know, I keep on trying to fix things as we run into them and as we see them. Uh, there's always little pieces that I'm working on, so... Yeah, it's going to be a con uh, continuous piece updating the sites and working on the little pieces. Uh, just so you know, though, we do drop it out there on GitHub so you can get the latest and greatest code at all times. It's right below the screen on the streaming here. There's a link to there. Um, if I'm not streaming live, then you can always catch me on Discord. Um, I'm on Discord <laughs> pretty much all my waking moments. I have it on my cell phone, too, so you can catch me there, too. Uh, but, yeah. How would you prevent other people um, inserting hacky plugins that might ruin servers or weather? Okay, here's what we're going to do. Early stages, we're basically saying, hey, if you want to create plugins and check them out and do everything, then yeah, no problem, we'll do whatever. But at some point in time, when we create a plugin market and we start helping people find the plugins and stuff, then we're going to have a code review on the plugins. We'll check them out. We'll make sure they're not doing, like you say, hacky stuff and, you know, ruining servers or anything, especially because this is so intensive on client side. Um, but then also it's a PHP site on the server. So we want to make sure that you're protected. So, yeah, we will have a code reveal and we'll actually basically like certify or whatever uh, plugins that come from us. So at that point, when we're ready for that stage, that we have an actual market and we're promoting other people's plugins and helping you guys get them into other scenes, then when we do that, there'll be an agreement of you uploading your plugin to us. It'll go through a code review and then they'll go out there and you won't be able to make changes that haven't been glanced at, approved or whatever, or at least you have to be, you know, there, there's certain things. We'll, we'll do some type of checking on the person who's doing it too. Um, but we'll have different permission levels, you know, on the market and stuff to be able to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that's... <laughs> hey, Waffles, how you doing? I guess you found another cafe and a better internet connection, right? <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, code reviews on developer... Let's see, I'm just on developer products. Um, so yeah, then they can always trust us and we'll be the ones that kind of make sure that everything works well with each other because it's not just the hacks. We want to make sure that it's running efficient. So like if they do something that just 
barbarically ruins the cycles per second or something, we want to make sure that they're uh, fine-tuning it and we give them some help maybe where needed to make sure that it runs as efficient as it can in a scene. Because the last thing you need is something that kills your cycles per second, uh, your frame rates and stuff. So we need to make sure that everybody's working on a good side of that so that when you add it to a scene, it enhances the scene without killing the scene. You know, so, so there'll be some things like that too. We'll have to you know, take it from different perspectives of how we check things. <laughs> can happen <laughs> yeah i know waffles uh when the viewers go up um you start feeling pressure and you know you know what's funny is my problem is i'll be focused on i'm doing this thing and i'm coding and i'm checking this stuff and everything else all of a sudden somebody asks me a question about hey how does this work or where did that come from and i'll go yeah i know that speech and then i'll kick into that mode and next thing you know i may lose a couple of people that were watching me developing because all of a sudden i'll take off on this tangent of what am i doing as a whole well a lot of the times people can catch me and talk to me on discord and i'll fill them in on a lot of those pieces but i am getting better about not explaining everything every time somebody asks me a question i'll give them details i'll give them pieces of it so that they understand what's going on but but yeah you're right um my viewers that have been here before don't need the whole breakdown again so so yeah first time i rated you was so funny you were freaking out <laughs> yeah you're right you're right <laughs> I was just, oh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know there's talking, thinking, typing, and keeping some type of idea of what I'm working on at the time going in my head. Um, then at the same time, you know, it does happen where I'm working on something and all of a sudden I'll run into an issue and I got to fix a problem, uh, you know, or or I've got to just make note of it and come back and fix it later if it's not some directly related to what I'm working on at the moment. You know, I have to just keep on taking them one thing at a time. So, so some of that stuff does knock me off pace a little bit. Um, I hope to think I'm getting a little bit better about it. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm trying. <laughs> but yeah, it is pretty funny when, when you catch me off guard like that. <laughs> uh, so what are you working on today, Waffles? You gonna jump in a scene and check out some more stuff? Okay, so we fixed the selection process. Um, so now you can pick your avatar with no trouble. The, the actual cursor goes over them and it will let you select it. That was kind of the problem we were having on the page is you'd see them, but your, the cursor wasn't lined up, so it wasn't doing it. Um, so found that problem and fixed it. And then we fixed another one with the coloring of the avatar. So that piece is in place. Um, selecting animations works. Oh, there's a couple different levels of animations, by the way. You can check, you can do things like, okay, you can pick whatever walk you want to do. Like if I picked sad walk, he kind of slopes his head and kind of goes that. Um, I can pick, you know, happy walk. And basically he does this, you know, cheerful walk. <laughs> yeah, what are you working on, Waffles? You know, so there's different walks, there's different things. I'll be adding more of these as I go. We have things like the dizzy walk where he kind of looks like he's stumbling as he walks. That's kind of funny. Um, we have a swagger, we have a suck, we have a, a sneaky walk, you know, we have the default mail, we have different ones. Uh, we have different runs, we have different uh, walk backwards. You can define all these things. But at the very bottom, we also have optional gestures. Now this ties directly to this little action camera down on the bottom. So what you can do is, oh, okay, yeah, no worries. I know, buffering on the streaming doesn't help keep up with live talking, right? Okay, so what happens is this. If you add an animation down here, you just click Add Animation and then select from the list. Um, there's everything from a simple wave, and when it finishes loading, it'll show up down here. It takes a second to load. Should have triggered it, come on. Or is it part of when I open this? Ah, there it is. If you then take your mouse or even touch screen or whatever and you hold over this, if you hold down the item, then it actually performs that particular, uh, that particular animation. And you can, add, you can add a number of them. We limited it for now, but we'll probably make it wide open. 
but it does have all kinds of um, it has all kinds of different things. Um, I don't know what some of these are. It needs to update that. I don't know why it did. It should have updated this even when I'm looking at it. Maybe it did. Maybe it just takes longer. I kind of left it before it did it. No, it loads it on the new fresh. I got to make sure it refreshes. Okay, and just so you know, some of them, I'm still fixing these, but some of them wig out a bit. <laughs> He's flying kind of. <laughs> I have something as a project on GitHub for people to see. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, just working on my new web page on a course before I start um, Andrew's course on Udemy. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Waffles, we'll have to all check that out too. Uh, so Waffles Project on GitHub. Make sure if you haven't friended Waffles or, you know, followed him, follow Waffles. Um, I also host Waffles as a, um auto host when he's not online here. So you can catch him when he goes online. Same for Bookus. Bookus, uh, he's, on, he's on here too. So you guys can follow them. Yeah. And also I host them when they're not here, when I'm not online. So make sure you check them out. Uh, but yeah, so we have different things that you can change the animations and you can add different animations. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. So depends what you want it to do. Muscle flex gesture. Let's see what that one does. I think we can assume what that one's going to do. <laughs> okay, that would look better if it's looking at me. So let's go to the camera view. That is the self camera. Oops. I'm looking at themselves through a wall. That doesn't help. Let me back up. I need to make it where it goes transparent when it does that. And I know some of them are bugging out the eyes when you move around. I'm work. This is all stuff that we're aware of that we got to work on. There we go. Now I have the muscle. <laughs> okay, so we have different cam. We have different uh, animations you can do. Different camera views. We'll keep adding and perfecting these different areas as we go, but. That's different pieces that we're working on. Um, so now, so what we've done is we fixed the install process. You can now select your avatar without any problem. And hey, Waffles, you just subscribed. You are too cool. <laughs> Thank you, Waffles. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Waffles. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. You're awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so we have all kinds of cool stuff on in here. You see, you did it to me again. Last time you raided me and it kind of made me go, woo, cool, yeah, whoops, and then I forget where I'm doing. And you did it again, and then you can do it anytime you want, by the way. <laughs> but you caught me off guard again. I appreciate it. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah, so, so on here, like I said, we're just working on the different pieces. Every time we find something, we make notes of it, and then we fix the different things. Um, fix my sub emotes. Okay, you can show me how, because I don't even know how to do that yet, but definitely we need to do something. One month, yeah, we need to fix that. It can be better than that for sure. I'll spend some time on that, because you deserve better than that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, you'll have to show me how probably, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, and let's see. So what do we want to do next? Um, we fixed those pieces. We got a couple more things in place. I did spot this thing where if I say merged items and then I go to... Oh, I know why. That's not broken. Ah, that's why I did that. I forgot. That's part of the building. So you can see the different parts that are cut out, but you're not going to edit them unless you're editing the building. When I right click, what it was trying to tell me is you're editing the building. That's why it kept on selecting the building. If I go down here and say open building in editor, then it'll open that specific item. So this part wasn't broken. It was basically telling me that I'm not using it correctly. Oh, and it's telling me to go to menu 25. I don't need that anymore. I'll fix that out of the code. I just needed to open this piece. That was for something else I was doing at the time, but we don't need it to go to a particular menu item. We don't need to open this every time it opens the building. I ah, see the transport rings came in when the user came in here. The other part was notice 
he's not facing the right direction. The building's behind me. That's a part of it that you need to fix. Uh, but that's not that's not a programming issue. That's actually just a setting. When you're in a scene, if you say use current, uh, you can go to set starting position, use current position. Now it's set from here on out. Oh, gifted a tier one sub to Bocus. Hey, it's their first gift sub in the channel. Awesome. Dude, you are awesome. You're on fire today. Waffles, you're on fire. <laughs> you are too cool. You are too cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I was showing you is that, see, we have these merge sections on or off, and it can show you the cutouts. Well, now if I right-click it, see, it selects that area that's cut out of the building. And if I, for example, move it, notice the wall is open, or there's a piece of wall below it. So it actually cuts out of the wall to make the door frame. That's what it's doing. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, I know. Waffles, you are a generous guy. <laughs> you are awesome. <laughs> oh, I'll spell awesome right this time, too. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so it does select the item, but you have to be editing the object that it's part of. Um, I did that on purpose, and the reason I did is this. In one scene, you can actually have the same item added more than one time. So it instances. So like I can go into a scene and then put a castle here and a castle here. Well, if you were to edit the castle, it needs to know that that's the same castle, different instance. Same design, different instance. So the easiest way to do it was if I'm editing the castle, I load just the castle and edit it. If I load the scene then, both scenes would have the same, you know, completed uh, improved design or changed design. So that's just what you're getting on that stuff. Um, I just completed my like, dislike, front and back end work. Feels good. Oh, cool. What's that for? Um, yeah, what's that part of a class or judging me? No, just kidding. <laughs> Social app. Oh, of some kind. Oh, cool. You know what? Okay, if you want to be the social network dude, we got to talk. Because here's the thing. You've got a social app? Okay. We can do a social app within this. And as people download the GitHub and turn on the plugin for the social app, they could be interconnected between sites. That could be one plugin by itself that becomes the social network of Walk the Web in 3D. You know, all the 3D browsing. So if you're interested in doing social apps and stuff like that, it could be really cool to be able to walk around. Let's say you walk around, you see a building, and then all of a sudden you can right click on it, or you can just click on it um, in your scene and then do like a thumbs up or a thumbs down for likes, dislikes. You know, maybe maybe that's something we do in scenes where when people like things, then we get the popularity points. We know what buildings people like to see, or what cities are becoming popular, or what uh, scenes are becoming popular, or games within scenes. You know. Um, Ripping off Facebook, hey, I got news for you. They ripped off everybody else. There's certain things that they did, like if you called it friends, opposed to, like in this case, we could call it neighbors or whatever we want to call it. But yeah, so there's certain things to do. But uh, definitely, I'm still not sure how um, will I implement chats. Okay, since it's web-based, what we do is we actually ping back to the server occasionally just to know if there's anything there. We could have it on a timer checking to see if anybody's written anything into a chat, have it stored in the database, and bring back that information. When it's delivered to all the recipients or the recipient logs offline or whatever, then it clears the chat. So there's some things we can do. I can help you design a chat. Um, I've written one into here, but right now my multiplayer is broken. I gotta fix the multiplayer first, then I can do it. Um, here's why multiplayer is broken, by the way. The avatars, I had them all working. Then I created multiplayer, and the multiplayer was working, where if you're in a scene and somebody else was there, it would automatically put them in the scene, you'd see them walk around, animations were working, all the goodies were in place. Everything was running good. Then I decided, ooh, I need to change the way the guy controls so that we have better control and faster. 
When I changed that, I didn't do it for the multiplayer yet, so that part's broken. The other piece is um, the avatars themselves. The Early on, I had created the camera views to match the avatars and everything else. Well, it turns out that all from coming from when I was bringing the avatars in from, uh, from Blender, they were all 90 degrees out of phase. So I rotated them. Well, then I set the cameras to be the direction they were facing. Well, what I should have done was find zero reference of the avatar, move the avatar to match it instead, and have the cameras always zero referencing. But what was happening is a building, you know, like a rotation direction, zero was here, but then the avatar zero was that way while this was pointing this way. So I realigned the avatar to make sure that they all work on zero referencing. Well, I haven't done that to the ones that are coming in through the um, through the other pieces yet. I haven't double checked their camera views and stuff. So it's going to take a little bit, but I'll get them all in place and I'll get that in. Then I want to create a socket IO so everybody's real time instead anyway. So, um, okay. So then let's see. I used blank, blank, blank. And it's easy, but I don't uh, know about private messages one-on-one -on -one, because I need to create different socket groups or whatever. I'll need to study that. Okay, well, since you're working with the socket groups to do the chat, that's all cool because I plan on making a socket IO server, and you can take advantage of that too when I bring it up online. Um, blank, blank, blank was socket IO. Oh, okay. Should have said those words. Sorry about that. I I'm, not in, I'm not in direct control of all the different things that it blocks on its own, but, but yeah, no problem there. Um, but yeah, I get you. Um, cool. You know what? Also, I need to. I need to do one more thing here. There we go. Now you're a VIP. Lucas, you're a VIP on this channel. Anytime you're here, I want to know when you're here. <laughs> you're of course a VIP. <laughs> but yeah, so so we can work on the chat together because I plan on using a socket IO server and I'm gonna bring up my own and I'm gonna use it for the multiplayer. So if we can do the multiplayer and the chat coming from there, that would be a really cool advanced feature. So so cool, yeah, definitely. Um we'll partner on that one. We'll 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 work on that. I can do the pieces on the core that need to be added and stuff. Um, and then we can make it work with the multiplayer. So like when you click on a guy, you include him in the chat. And if you want, you can add a third person into the same group chat or you can keep it private chat. We'll work on those kind of things and get them in place. Um, we may even set up some things so that if you walk too far away from them, you're no longer chatting. So if you walk away, it'll automatically close off your chat with them. Uh, I don't know. We'll see about some features. We'll make some where you can walk away. We'll make some that, you know... You can turn off that feature if you want. We'll, we'll have some settings on there, but I can see some pretty cool uses that tie it right to the multiplayer and having them in the scenes and you you know seeing the other people as you walk around. So, but I want to create a socket IO server. That's on my list. So I'm working on the avatars. I got to fix the cameras to make sure that all the camera views are in the right place and we can switch between all of them and they're parenting correctly and all that other goodies. Once that's working, then the next step is to make sure the multiplayer is working. Uh, the poor man's multiplayer, which is just using HTTP straight right from the start. And then I'm going to create a socket IO server that people can um, turn on or off and upgrade to if they want to, which will be a paid service that we can make a couple bucks on. So, you know, more money we make, the more money I can give to everybody that's helping me create things. <laughs> so I'll be hiring you people as we do things, as we can afford it. Anybody that wants a job, that is. Or even get some royalty, get some money on your plugins. You know, every time somebody buys a plugin that you created or helped create, then basically that'll be a cut of the action for you. So keep it in mind when you're building things, and we'll we'll keep on adding them. Okay, so this particular thing, where did I find it? Um, this right here, open with edit building. That's the one I wanted. I do not want it to open that menu item when it does it, so I'll clear that out. This one, new community and new community, okay. That one I'm not worried about. Those are specific for a different reason. Okay, so we're good on that piece. I cleared that little bite out of there. Um, that's, that's this menu thing. That made it open the menu when I open this page. I can tell it which menu item I want it to open and it'll automatically start 
when you use a link, you can have it open right to something. So basically I turned it uh, where I didn't want it to do it. So now when I click on edit a building, it doesn't pre-open a menu item. It'll be on the default menu, which is the root level, this level, telling you that you have a building open, but you're not doing anything with it yet. Then you have options and settings and you can edit the building just by clicking on any of these options. Okay, so let's see anything else we're going to jump on in here. Um, okay. Okay, well that, you know, we've done some pretty good stuff here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and take it offline. I'm going to upload, I'm going to update GitHub with the latest code that I, fixes that I just put in place. And I'm going to pack, kind of package it up so that anybody that has a previous version, they'll get a notification in their dashboard to click the link and it'll automatically perform the update for them. So that's kind of the thing I'm going to do next here. Um, so I'll get that stuff in place. I need to double check a you know, run a couple more tests and make sure everything's working good. But then I'm going to go ahead and update the piece online and I'll run in with that. But I'm going to go ahead and sign off at this time. And I want to thank all of you for watching me. Bokus, thanks for hanging out with me. And I'll be back again. Um, I'm also auto hosting you and Waffles and others. So throughout the day, you'll catch different people on here that are doing things related to 3D, especially, but also some component things like what you do with the social network. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Nice work you're doing here. We'll be here on the stream often. I really appreciate that. And like I said, I'm going to keep on trying to open up opportunities that you can create plugins and make money on your plugins. So uh, if I partner with you or if you do them on your own, either way, we'll do some things. Um, I'll help you where you need it to create your own plugins. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking for the king of social media. I'm looking for the king of vehicles and scenes. I'm looking for the king of, you know, the chat. And uh, we've got another guy that wants to work with us on a, a voice over IP chat. That, that'd be really cool. So we've got some other things in the mix. Um, if you've met uh, YouTube admin, he's working. He's going to work on a chat that has to do with the voice over IP part of it. So maybe you want to check out what he's doing or we can all work together on it. Maybe it's a good joint project. I don't know. We'll... We'll decide. I'll let you decide too. If you're creating your own thing, I don't want to, you know, crowd you on that. Uh, but yeah, you met admin. Um, the other part is this: um, there's the chat functionality, but there's also the bulletin board type functionality. Uh, early stages, I tested out some code and I actually ran some things where you would blog into a form that's pretty much three dimensional, hanging on the wall, and as you type things in there, it would show up, and if you hit enter, it would automatically post it on this wall. So you had like a place where you could submit things, but another place where it showed the general blog. And it was everything from the vertical line between the posts were coming out in 3D, so it actually stuck out of the page. Uh, the headings were in bold. Uh, they were in 3D text that came out of the page. Um, I, can, I made picture frames around the pictures. I played around with a lot of different things. But we could actually create a 3D blog that it's on the wall, but it actually sticks out of the wall. Um, I started experimenting of using a height map as the um, on an image so that instead of the image just being a flat image, it actually took the contours of whatever the height map picked up out of the thing. So it was neither an intention picture or an, or an outward picture based on any picture that they uploaded. So I started playing around with things like that, stuff we could possibly do. Um, but yeah, creating a 3D blog, those are all parts that would work great in a social network atmosphere. Uh, so that in your scene or in your town, let's say you had a, you know, a town bulletin board, here's, here's where you could go and whatever people that had access to to post could make notes and things about the town that you visit. That's the kind of social media stuff that I'd like to see that would be really cool to add. So 3D objects, um, 3D pieces that interact with those other parts. We're talking about, um, here was another thing we could do. I got to show you this before we go on because I showed this to admin and he really liked it. Um, but there's uh, Babylon JS. Um, 
it was using video texture and it uses the it it was um live stream uh this here i think they did an example um in here this playground i think it is it's pretty cool but this is an example of what works from babylon and we can implement this into the scenes but it will actually use my camera for example um that one isn't using my camera okay there was a different one but what happens is it can actually put live camera feed onto objects so we can take like a that's that's not the one I was thinking of. Let me see here. There's more than one. Um, is it the now? See, I don't need that right now. There was a streaming texture, live streaming video as a texture. They I I saved these links by the way. They're in. In fact, I probably saved the link I'm looking for in in the other part. But let me see if this is it. Oh, one thing it's not going to like is probably while I'm streaming, probably trying to intercept the streaming piece of it. Um, in Discord, I'll show it to you. But what I have is there's the there's actually a texture that you can put on objects. It doesn't even have to be a flat object. But when you put the texture on the object, it picks up your webcam. So you can actually stream into a 3D scene and then others can view this stream that's on that object. So if that's the case... What would it take to be able to do something like a FaceTime or a video conferencing call or something right in a 3D scene where you can actually walk around the TV while you're looking at it? That's the kind of cool stuff that I saw in here that we can do. Um, I tested it on an early stage. I created an actual TV and put a movie in it and I played a video, but now they've added it where you can do live stream too. So that would be cool to not only be able to talk to each other live with voice over IP, but if we could actually send the video and actually look at it in the scene where you're looking at video conferencing, talking to each other while you're there, that's the future of 3D social networking. Being able to just click a link and now all of a sudden you're live right in a scene and you're talking to somebody else in a scene with the video conferencing. Or let's say I'm going to do my streaming. I could have it also stream to a 3D scene that's maybe a drive-in theater and you see this big old screen and you're watching my stream right there live in 3D. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to get those pieces in place so that we can really just show off all these different features of 3D. But that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, I love it. I know. Isn't it the coolest? I like this new stuff. That's what really gets me going is I want to create things that nobody else or you may have imagined it, but you never thought we could do it today. And I want to create those things. So yeah, so keep your keep your ideas coming. Throw them in the Discord. We've got some areas there. I I called one communication like a com plugin. That's like just like a code name, very very bland. But we can talk about all kinds of things in there, um, like this stuff where we're dealing with different pieces, you know, um, ideas. But yeah. So so that's where we're heading. That's the kind of stuff that I want to be able to do. Now here's the deal. People go to the website or the GitHub, they download the code, they can bring up their server, and then they can do some things for free with plugins. But if they want to connect up to the grid, which is going to be everybody in the world, all the different instances, then they'll pay a nominal fee, which won't be much because I want all developers to be able to do it as well as end users, whoever wants to run a server, connect up to it, and then they would be able to take advantage of these things like, like the Socket.io servers, you know, for fast... Uh, real-time uh, multiplayer um, but we'll have a poor man's multiplayer in there that comes out when you first get it so you can see others walk around your scenes you know we'll give them both um, but you know where they can enhance their experience on their servers any game that they choose to run they can pay to unlock these extra features and functionality um, social networking you get the chat for free but if you want to unlock the voice over IP or the video conferencing on your site you pay a one-time on you know unlock fee, or you pay a fee to um, you pay a fee subscription fee to keep it going for you know a year at a time or whatever. That's the kind of stuff I want to be able to do. So that's where we're heading. It'll be the platform for creating your scenes, creating your custom things, but then also taking all these pieces from other people. 
I create an awesome store, somebody else can take and drop it in the scene if I release it to them, of course. Um, but they can put it in their scenes and, you know, that kind of stuff. It's going to be really cool. I'm talking about 3D Internet cities, you know, creating creating 3D Internet of the future. A mix of games, 3D shopping, wandering around, trying different things. Yeah, so much to be done. Hop in a car, drive to the next city. Have trains between cities. Have spaceships that take you to other planets. You know, anything else that we can think of. We just keep on adding it in. And you do plugins to add functionality to any scene that you want to. There's so much that can be done, and pretty much anything is possible to be done. You're right. It's just a matter of writing the code that works with the gaming engine. And we can even we can even have different sites working with different gaming engines, by the way, because the code that goes in between them is like the definitions of what to create. Then it relies on the engine and the uh, physics engine that you have turned on to actually use that code on that server. So it's more about what you want to create that gets sent between the servers and then the hosting server is what can either run that code or it can't. So so that's what we can do. We can actually have a Unity version. We can have a Babylon version. We can have um, you know different things that run the code in different ways but they interconnect to each other anyway. That's That's my goal. That's where I'd like to see it go. Um, but yeah, any hierarchy in that life? Um, well, the main idea right now, the reason I started with uh, Babylon as the gaming engine is because I needed it to um, be something that people can go to their website, watch a couple of tutorials and pick up on very quickly. And so that kind of had a good platform for doing it. And it actually is a really good engine. They've done a lot with it. So I liked that part. Um, but as for a hierarchy in that life, um, my biggest thing is the base code. It's out there for free with that. Um, and we'll keep on building on it. We'll just keep on adding. We'll keep on adding functionality. We'll add other server versions as we go. Uh, I also, I do own the, the domain name 3dbrowsing.org. And what I plan to do is I'm going to make that a wiki site. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell us all the standards for connecting up a server between servers. So that if you were to just write a file on a server and you named it right, and if you hooked it up you know, to provide the right information, it could actually generate a building and stuff. So I want to be able to share that standard and also be able to put out these you know, different versions of itself so that we know how to talk to each other and stuff. So that's kind of the idea. That's, that's where it's coming from. That's why we have certain pieces in the code as the core and then uh, nature disasters. Yeah, yeah, it could do things like that. We could actually simulate them. We could have it where it actually breaks up building meshes and crumbles them to the ground when it hits like an earthquake simulation or a tornado. We could have weather like a certain other gentleman in our chat just a little while ago. Um, my apologies for not remembering your name. Um, I'm glancing back because it's important to credit where credit is due here. Um, Anathu, A-N-A-T-H-U-27. Yeah, yeah, I want to thank you for that one. Right. Oh, and thanks, Bookie. Pre I appreciate that. But yeah, so definitely that kind of things where we can actually have real live weather things going through the scenes. You know what I'd like? I'd like you to be able to create a plugin that said, um, this is this location on Earth and always match the weather with this API that is a weather broadcasting thing. So if it's hot and sunny, you see the sun. If it's cloudy, you see some clouds go over. If it's patchy clouds, patchy clouds are in your scene. If it's, you know, that kind of stuff would be so cool. Um, if it's raining today, you'd see rain. If it's heavy rain, you see heavy rain. That kind of stuff. I You should be able to hook it up and say, I want the weather and time of day to match this place. And just because we get the feed in here, it should be able to decipher it and put it into the scene. I would love stuff like that. That's what brings it to life and makes it, hey, it's raining outside. All of a sudden you look on the scene, hey, it's raining. You know, that's where we're really going to get some people's attention. I love ideas like that. Bring it to life. Bring the weather into the scene. That's the difference between what else is out there and what we're doing. First of all, we're... 
games that are out there and stuff create their game and then they put up other game servers to support the users. This is, here's your piece of the puzzle. Now you can write code even in its smallest piece. Even if I'm just creating one car you can drive in a scene, that piece right there, you can perfect it and drop it into scenes. Now you've contributed to the overall picture. So it's kind of like everybody's creating all these things with Blender and they're creating with Maya and they're creating with AutoCAD. Everybody's creating 3D objects. This is a platform where we can put them all together and use them in scenes. You know, so it all actually does that. It comes together. Um, and then it's actually not that hard, I think. Uh, get live weather and just start snow, for example, or rain. Yeah, as functions, exactly. Um, it's hard maybe where and how to start different weather, transitions and that, but idea is simple. Well, here's the deal. Right now, this scene, for example, um, this one's not a good example. Let me go back to the community. There's a reason is I set the scene and the layout in the community level, but I got to show you this because this does, this does affect it. Um, I can already, what it is, I have my platform, the ground, and it's kind of like a conveyor belt. You can walk around and never run off the end of it because it's actually moving with you. And I actually changed the texture on the surface so that it looks like you're walking around and everything. So it kind of works like a conveyor belt. You'll never walk off the end of the earth. Okay. But there's this dome that is the sky above you. And what happens is, for example, uh, let me see here. Where is... Okay. You know what? Let me separate from the avatar because that's the easiest way to see this. Uh, but let me find the sun here. Oh, the sun's directly up above me. Okay. In this scene, I can edit the community and I can edit the landscape. One thing I can do is I can change the extended ground of whatever textures on it. Um, I can also change the water depth. If it's shallow enough, it gets rid of the water if you set it to zero. Um, you can also change the gravity in your scene and that gets acted on the characters and everything else. If you add ground terrain, that's like putting in sections of mountains or hills or whatever you want to do to your terrain. Um, but one of the things you can do is you can set the sky. Now, I have some presets here, like if I say, okay, day scene or sunrise, I can click the button and it will actually, I got to see, okay, sunrise is in the other direction, so let me get around the building. And it actually sets the sunrise over here, for example. You can also go sunset and now the sun will move to the other side which technically I do have a compass and this is east and west type thing. Um, you can also say night scene. And what I do is I turn the sun into the moon. So it looks like there's a glow of the moon. It's still heading into position. So there's like a glow of a full moon. And then basically it's here. Um, and what I see, water is animated. Yes, um, yes it is. Uh, I used um, a water shader. A water shader and a bump map and it actually moves so like when I'm closer to the actual water it does have a feel it has a wave to it and we can even change the bump map to change the wave and frequency and everything else of the water so it does have those kind of things so when I say night I just use what looks like a moon kind of a glare off the moon and I darken the scene a little bit we can turn down the lights we have all the controls for you know, all the various lighting. Man, he's not on. Oh, yeah, he's on the ground. No, he isn't. Okay, well, gravity wasn't applied or something. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, so we have this ability. Well, watch this. When I go to, for example, sunset, and I bring my sun over here. Okay, it's coming over. The other thing I set up is you can do advanced, and you can tell it exactly how you want it to be. For example, the inclination, you can set the depth of whatever height you want the sun to be at and brightness and stuff that's related to it, the way the sky looks around it. So you can set the exact scene. Um, you can also change the luminesce of the sky to how bright it is. Uh, these are also sliders. So you can change how you want it to be. Um, but they have a bunch of different settings and each one affect the sky in different ways. Everything from the turbidity, which uh, and the haze, um, this rotates it. It went around the earth, by the way. So this one, as I move it, it's actually changing the position of the, or is it this one? Uh, global sky, angle of the sun position. Yeah, so if I move that one back here, notice it's moving the sun in position to the sky, uh, where it is around the earth. 
So since we have these options, we can actually fine tune it. Um, and also whatever haze it has or lack of haze. So you can set these numbers down more and you get a clearer sky. Uh, there's, there's so many different settings that you can play around with to set your scene. Um, but that's fine tuning the various parts. Also the particle size of the haze. Notice how it just changed the fog level kind of idea. So there's different things we can do. Um, or you can just say, hey, I need a day scene or a sunrise as a starting point, and then you can adjust them from there. Well, see, because we have this type of technology, we can also make it where the light follows the sun. So we set it in the sky position. So as the sun moves over, the angle of the shadows changes. Um, we can also change it so that it follows the time of day. So we actually do have a sunrise and a sunset in the scene. So we have some of the groundwork already laid out for a lot of this stuff. All we have to do is decide which piece we want to use. Um, you know, if you want it to be whatever it is, and we can actually set timers so that it checks the time real time and moves accordingly. You know, so that stuff is available. Um, we have all kinds of cool stuff. Oops, I told it not to use it. Let me see. I'll tell it to put it on there, and all I have to do is click Save. Save the sky, and now it's done. Okay, so now the scene always has that sky in there. So there's some cool stuff like that I've already built in here. Um, like I said, we have the water position. We have all kinds of stuff. Um, let me see. Edit the community, and then landscape and scene. We could do the water depth, for example. Right now it's at a negative 15. If I came over here and move it up, you can start to see in the scene where it shows this pattern, like really under the surface, you can actually see it through it. So it actually does have the um, refraction of the water underneath the surface. It will also reflect objects that are in view from your camera view. So if I had a cliff out here, it will, I eh, know I'm going under the water there. If I look at the cliff and stuff, it will reflect ref, reflect the objects into the scene that are part of the ground and stuff and different things. So you get a little bit of both of those kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so there are different settings that we can play around with and do. Um, I also was able to put the water onto an object. So if you created like a pond and you wanted a little bit of water in the pond, you could actually put the water surface into the pond and it works. So there's some things like that we have in play, you know, that you can take advantage of now. Um, so, oh, I didn't mean to hit backspace. I meant to hit that arrow down there. <laughs> if I do that, I know other people are doing it. I may have to change the way I do it. Because this backspace, and then when I'm in a menu, like here, that is the back on the menu. <laughs> I go too high and I'll hit this one. So maybe I need to rethink where I'm putting that. I don't know, maybe at the bottom of the menu instead of top. I don't know. It's kind of convenient where it's at if I remember it's there. <laughs> well, we can play around with settings like that anytime. But yeah, so the idea is just to put as much stuff as we can into scenes and try out different things. So, but real weather, real time, real skies, real everything, it's totally doable. Oh, what I was going to go to is, since it's a dome over the city that does the sky, it would be easy to use a particle emitter, which, by the way, an example of a particle emitter is... The smoke, for example. Now, this smoke that I'm using right here is actually um, using a black image, and that's why it looks like smoke, and it's partially transparent. That's why it looks like smoke, and it has a whole bunch of pieces to it. Um, I can also double the size just by doubling the size of the shape of the emitter. And it's basically coming out of a box, an invisible box in a scene. So I can add smoke just by doing that. I can scale it to whatever size I need it to be, and I can put it in any position in the scene where I want it to be. So, for example, if I want it to be a nice air, narrow chimney, all I have to do is cut it narrow, and I can make it as high as I want it to be. And now we have the smoke. Here, let me turn off the lines. Now you can really see the smoke. So, we can make it wider just by clicking on the objects. Turn off the lines. There we go. And we can make something smoke. Now. I can even rotate that, by the way, like in the x-axis, for example, and I can tell it to go certain directions. So because I have control over this, 
one of the things I can do, I know it keeps on redrawing my lines. Uh, one of the things I can do is I can actually do a particle that creates a cloud and sends it across the sky, leaving the time to live all the way across the sky. It'll still change slightly. We can even have other things act on it, like wind or rays of you know, direction and stuff, but it can actually change as it's moving across the sky and dissolve at the other end of the sky. But it comes in from one end of the dome, like through the dome, through the sky and out the other side of the dome. So it could look like it just passed over the earth kind of feel. So I know we can do some things that are really cool. Um, we can also control how thick they are by the transparency and the objects we use to draw them out. Um, there's, there's all kinds of things. Uh, it also can control, like we can turn on a cloud and then stop it and then turn on another cloud and stop it. And we can make them come out of random positions. So the sky never looks the same. The clouds never look the same. <laughs> so... I know I'm going off on a tangent about weather, but that's really cool stuff if you ask me. So I'm thinking we can create some things that does weather that does exactly this kind of stuff. Or even if we plan that there's a wind, then all of a sudden we take a sailboat, well the wind acts on the sailboat. We can do things like that. We can make the smoke automatically pick up the wind. We can do all kinds of things in these scenes where anything in the scene, the existing things, all take effect because you've added something new to it. But that's the kind of life cycle of what the stuff is in the scenes. Um, that's, that's the kind of stuff we're creating. It's really cool. It's really cool. And we're going to create some cool stuff. And then at the same time, we're going to play some games. We're talking. I'm already working on a mini golf game so everybody can just go over there and play mini golf when they want. I'm working on a paintball game just so that we can go over there and shoot each other. And also it sets up the multiplayer and also sets up a lot of the interaction with other users so that you can totally... Um, you know, talk with each other and you can also shoot at each other and it'll set up so if anybody else wants to make a similar game, they'll have an example of how we made it work. Um, then they can like totally trick it out with all their extras. But that's the kind of stuff we're creating. Uh, we'll do some go-kart races. We'll do some, you know, or, you know, whatever. We'll create some different things and let people use it as models for creating other things. Okay, so yeah, some really cool stuff. Really cool. If you have other ideas and want to share them and also maybe even be part of building some stuff, then definitely find me on Discord. It's the link down below uh, the scene. Find me on Discord. Connect with me. Talk with me, whatever. And I'll definitely uh, we'll start writing in some of those blogs. We have them separated by different topics of things that we want to create. So we'll have to, you know, we'll keep on adding them as we think of them, like this weather system. I think that'd be a great plug-in, and I think it would be really cool to be able to do a number of things with that. So maybe we'll put one on there. Um, I'll put a chat on there. I'll add it so that we can add the weather system, and people can actually create them and use them in their scenes just by downloading the plugin and turning it on. So we'll, we'll set up some stuff like that. Um, but any idea that you think of, we'll talk about them and we'll add it. And if you want to build something, I'll help you build it. I'll give you advice or I'll add things into the core coding to support what you're trying to do. Um, yeah, it's open. It's an open source project and we're open to ideas and we're open to building whatever we can think of. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to call it a day here. I got other things I'm going to run over and do, but you know what I'm going to do? Let's see. Uh, when I leave here... I think we've got six people on here, and if you guys don't mind, let's go run over and raid somebody. I haven't done that from here yet, um, so I know I owe some people some things, and a lot of people have given me a lot of support. I think it'd be a cool idea if we raided somebody. So let's check out who's online here. Um, okay, uh... Well, I tell you what, we've got somebody with seven different people online, and we've got six, so we can practically double their effort here. Um, this is a guy I checked out a couple times. He's a really cool coder. He's doing some old school stuff, and I think it'd be kind of fun to jump in there. So make yourself known when you get over there. Say hi to him, and let's see if we can't scare him and shake him up a little bit. <laughs> so thank you for watching me today. Uh, if you haven't already, click follow. And I want to thank the new subscribers today. I really appreciate that, uh, Waffles and Bookus. Appreciate it. We're doing great. And uh, I'll see you again real soon. But here we go. Let's start the raid.